Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We are actually here today in our store, which is new. Uh, we've been coming to you previously from our studio in upstate New York. And finally, we are open for in-store shopping, which is so exciting. And I wanted to take this opportunity now that we're here to welcome you physically into the store and um, uh, uh, you know, welcome you guys. If you're local, please come and visit us. We would love to see you. And um, we have the store all set up for in-store shopping. We've been really, really busy this week um, trying to get everything out on display for you. We had, um, right before the shutdown, we actually uh, had just come back from our biggest buying trip of the year. And we had so much inventory that we had not yet had a chance to um, display. Can you can you guys hear us okay uh, because of the mask and everything? Uh, should Jilly speak louder? Let me see. Is that say something? Can you guys hear me okay? Is the volume all right? I'm trying to enunciate as best as I can. <laughs> yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, good. All right. If there are any quality Hi, sound, sound issues, just let us know in the comments, and we'll. We'll try and troubleshoot them. And I'm Everyone's... doing the I'm the tripod today, so sorry about the shaking. <laughs> it's gonna be shaky. Um, yeah, we're all doing our best. We're all adapting to this new normal. So um, anyway, as I was saying, we had just come back from our biggest uh, shopping trip of the year right before we shut down, so we never got a chance to display all of the things that we had bought. Um, and so that's what we've been working on for the past couple of weeks now is getting everything out on display so that if you are able to come and visit us, you'll see lots of new and interesting things um only a portion of what we have available is on our website so if you are local i really do encourage you to come down if you're able to because you'll be able to see so many more things that are not available on the website and maybe one of these days we'll be able to do a bit of a virtual tour for you guys um, and we can show you kind of informally the things that we have um, on display here so um yeah, we just wanted to um, mention that also, obviously, since we are shooting this in the store, we don't have our normal setup that um, we had gotten used to using. So I apologize for the audio quality. I apologize for the video quality. We're not using our, our best camera, our best equipment. We're just using cell phones, so it's a little quick and dirty, but hopefully um, it'll be enough for you to get a sense of where we are and what we're doing and what we have to show you today. Um, and uh, one uh, important thing that I wanted to announce is that we are going to start offering virtual shopping experiences. So if you are not local or even if you are and you're not able to come down, we would uh, love to invite you to contact us and make an appointment and then we can take you on a virtual shopping tour of the store. We can set aside all kinds of things that you might be interested in. As I mentioned, a lot of the things that we have in store are not available on the website. So if you're not able to come into the store, you're really missing out on a huge variety of things. So if you have um, a birthday coming up or an anniversary or you're looking for a gift for someone, you know, make an appointment with us. Let us um, show you what we have available and we can set it aside and ship it to you. So definitely encourage you to check that out. We're excited to offer that option that's new. Um, so you can make an appointment with us um, by calling 212-343-1114 extension 201 or you can email us at info at theevolutionstore.com and we'll do the virtual shopping tours over WhatsApp or Facebook because those are encrypted um, uh, you know, voice chat uh, platforms so you know everything will be secure in terms of car, you know, credit card information and all of that. So. We want to make sure that we do this right, so uh, hopefully some of you will take us up on that. We would love to do that with you. Uh, anything else to add before I get started with um, what we have today? Uh, no, I think that's good. Okay. Are we going to uh, uh, show a little bit of the store to them, the stuff that we put out? You want to do a little tour? A yeah, little why not? Tour today? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? All right. Well, I'll take we're in you the on, store, so I'll take you on a quick tour. So right here, right now, we're in the back of the store. Yep. Uh, over here, you can say see some of our beautiful insect uh, displays that we have um, made. So all of this work is custom. We do this all in our studio in upstate New York. 
Um, you can see we have a bunch of interesting things all sprinkled around, everything from goat horns to um, lingams from India, a beautiful, exotic, crazy looking seashells. And here we have our uh, Siva prints. So these are available online, some of you may have seen them, but they're really beautiful to see in person as well. So we have these really big, um, you know, really big drawers that have all these different prints in them. We have over 50 different styles. So I definitely... Then another um, peek back here, we have some skeletal articulations that we have framed. So that's something interesting as well. That's also something that we do ourselves um, is the framing and the displays. So it's, all of these are unique, one of a kind displays. We have also back here our um, unframed insects. So a lot of times people will come to us and they'll need an unframed insect either for a photo shoot or an art project or something like that. And um, it's, uh, it's great to be able to pick out the exact specimen that you need. And also what people can do when they come to see us is we have a lot of different species in the drawers that we aren't necessarily able to keep in stock framed all the time. So you can come down and pick the exact specimen, the exact species that you want, and we can have it custom framed for you. What about some of the stuff that is new that people haven't seen? Oh, okay. Well, what do we have since, uh, here? Since we've been closed, we've displayed a bunch of new stuff. Well, what have we displayed? Um, a lot of new minerals. Mostly, mostly new minerals. So here are some of the minerals um, that we've displayed. We have different sizes of quartz. This is garnet. Um, blue Appetite is new. We have that in three different sizes. We also have little tiny pieces and vials. Um, so we have a little bit of everything here. Um, we restocked on our pyrite in vials. So those are very cute. This is Sardonyx. We have that in three different sizes as well. And we have a whole variety of really cute mineral hearts. These are amethyst and we have some other ones back here. A whole variety of them. So I know that when we featured some of our mineral hearts on our website a few weeks or months ago now, we sold out immediately. So I think that those are very popular. They make great little gifts. Um, we have some other types of minerals, aragonite, turquoise, tangerine. These are very cool. This is carborundum, which is a silicon carbide and it is really cool. It's actually a byproduct of the tech industry. So they, um, this is some kind of mineral that is created when um, they're making like microchips or something like that. So these are discarded, but they're just too cool to, to you know, to just let, the you know, octopus let us is new too. The octopus is new. He's cool. Try him out. We have um, these really adorable smoky citrine points. These are really, really beautiful. A very unique color. Can you move it a little slower? Sure. Yeah, so people can see the shimmer. There it is. So this is something that we haven't really had before. Very yeah, unique, really beautiful. really beautiful color. Um, we have little tiny mineral spheres as well. So we like to get minerals in lots of different shapes. Um, here, this is called uh, sometimes people call these palm stones because they fit so nicely in the palm of your hand. These are spheres, these are points. So we have all different kinds of um, shapes and sizes of things. These are double terminated fluorite points. Double terminated means they have points on both sides. So those are kind of cool and unique. You can really see the gradation from green to purple. It's really beautiful. So all of these for the most part are hand selected by us. When we, go, um, when we go on our shopping trips. And that's the little stuff. And then we also bring back some big stuff. So over here, we have a really beautiful amethyst ring. So this is all natural amethyst and it's just been cut and polished. You can see on the outside here, it has this very cool crust, um, which has all interesting, you know, shades of green and brown to it. And then of course, inside you have beautiful amethyst, really big, dark crystals. That's how we really like to, to see them. 
and um, we have them on a beautiful um, metal stand, so it would look really nice um, on, a, on a table or something like that. And then this is a really large, um, is it citrine? Yes. Yes, yeah, citrine geode. So sometimes these are called cathedrals, this type of shape. Um, I guess because it kind of looks like maybe like a cathedral window or something like that. But it's basically a geode. It's um, really large, very heavy. It has this really nice dark orange crystal point. Um, very unusual color as well. And it's really big and heavy and it's a really unique specimen. What else should I show them? Maybe some fossils? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. Over here, so we restocked on these. We this is a kind of a classic thing. It's actually part of my necklace as well. So this is a nautiloid, which is a, a type of fossil, and they come in all different sizes. But basically, um, it's this really beautiful black and gray color. People call these letter openers just because that's kind of like their shape, um, and they're really nice. And we have them in two different sizes. Um, we. Uh, have these beautiful ammonites. So these are the ammonites that we featured in our last episode. Um, if you want to check that out, we talked all about ammonites. This is a different type, um, which is really beautiful in 3D. Um, very unique, unusual to see them in this shape. Um, what else do we have? We have little tiny um, dinosaur teeth, which are great. They come in a little vial, really beautiful. Um, let me see what else. These fossil sea biscuits, these have a really nice heft to them. So these are all things um, that we just put out. Over here, the larger piece. Yeah, why not? So this is a really interesting fossil um, that we were able to find. So these are fossil oysters, right? So if you've ever had oysters, you would recognize those. And then these are turritella shells. So I think I actually have the modern version of that, yeah. So you can see, so this is a, this is a modern shell that you can also, that we also have. And so you can see in 50 million years, this shell hasn't changed very much. And I always think that's very interesting. So this piece is really large, it's really complex, it has beautiful detail. So not only do you have these bigger pieces, but then you have lots of tinier, small shells inside of it. Uh, on the back as well, there's also um, all kinds of interesting texture and um, you know elements to it. It's just, it's a really beautiful, unique piece. Um, so I was really excited that we, we found that one. Um, what else? That's it? Okay. Um, cool. and there's if so you, much more that we could show you, of course. And obviously if you uh, email us or call us, uh, we can make an appointment and if you're interested in fossils, we can spend time with you uh, oh, yeah, showing see. fossils. Absolutely. So this is the kind of thing that we could do if you wanted to book a virtual shopping tour with us. Um, we could if you let us know, oh, I'm interested in fossils, I'm interested in minerals, we could have a whole display set out for you and you can pick and choose whichever ones that you're interested. We could answer your questions about, uh, you know, what we have, um, you know, where they're from, how old they are. We could really give you everything that you need to know. So I hope that some people take advantage of that. That would be really fun. And then I guess as we make our way back, you can also highlight this is our insect wall. And we're today, we're gonna to be talking about our framed insects. Um, so this gives you a little preview of what you can see. You can see there are dozens and dozens and dozens of different species hundreds. that we offer, hundreds and hundreds. So really big variety. Um, today we have selected three um, to talk to you a little bit about. So these three here, these three framed insects, um, so this is, we have um, Graphium Weiski, Papilio Blumai, and Papilio Rumenzovia. So they're all a little bit different. 
Um, what I can tell you about our framed insects, uh, as I mentioned before, they're made on uh, in our fabrication department in upstate New York. So we have some really talented artists who, we, who work with us, um, artisans who do all of the mounting and, and framing for us. It's really an art, it's really a skill to be able to imagine, you know, having to manipulate paper thin um, wings that are so delicate and you don't want to disturb the scales and the antennae. It really requires a lot of training and a lot of skill to be able to position them. And then of course, make, maintaining such a um, eye for detail, making sure that they're exactly symmetrical, making sure there are no tears or rips or anything like that. We only use perfect specimens. So if you purchase a framed insect from us, you're guaranteed that it's gonna be 100% intact. It's gonna have um, all of its parts. It's not gonna have any, you know, any scuffing or anything missing, anything torn. So we really try to focus on quality. We take our time, we select only the most perfect specimens and then we mount them extremely carefully so that they're really, really perfect. Um, and then I also just want to highlight our, our frames. This is a, um, really a, a signature frame for us. Not many people do them this way. We do them in double glass. So most people will have a solid back, um, but we have a glass back. So you can see the difference between the front and the back of the butterfly, which sometimes can be quite interesting. Look at this one, for example. It's brown on the back green on the front, a completely different experience. Um, the patterning is often very different from one side to the other, and it's just so interesting to, to be able to really appreciate the specimen and all of its, all of its beauty, all of its difference. Um, so that is our, our framed insects. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of these, and then we can maybe go through some of the different display ideas that you might um, that you might have to actually uh, incorporate these framed insects into your home. So real quickly, I selected these three butterflies because they're all part of the Papilionidae family. So there are different families of butterflies. Papilionidae is one of them. Um, Papilionidae is known because it is the family of butterflies that has over 500 species in it and they're known to be really large, really colorful. Um, they're very, uh, uh, they're very, very beautiful, this family of butterflies. And so as you can see by these three examples, they're really interesting patterns, really interesting shapes, colors. Some of them are very large, some of them are small, but a lot of them are very large and impressive. Um, most of the Papilionidae's live in tropical environments, but they actually occur on every continent except Antarctica. So you can find them all over the world, but these bright colors, these big, beautiful, bold patterns, those are typical of tropical environments because they blend in with their environment, right? They blend in with uh, big, beautiful flowers, interesting foliage. So a lot of the times, um, creatures that live in tropical environments will have all of these bright colors. Um, so that's really beautiful. And then um, just the name uh, Papilionidae, right, has as its uh, root Papilio, which literally means butterfly in Latin. So this is the quintessential butterfly. When you think about butterflies, these are often the types of butterflies that you think about. And then their common name, so the Papilionidae is the, the Latin name, the common name is swallowtail butterflies. And, and they're called swallowtail butterflies because many of them like these two have these little um, teardrop extensions on the bottom of their wings, which make them look like swallows. If you've ever seen a swallow butterfly in flight, it has this beautiful teardrop, teardrop sort of shape to its tail. And so that's why these are called swallowtail butterflies. Um, not all of them have them. As you can see, this one, um, this species doesn't have that particular feature, but many of them do. And that's why they have that name. Um, so to start off with, we're going to talk about, we're going to go from smallest to largest. This is Graphium Weisky. It is only found in Papua New Guinea, so it's very specific to that region. Um, and I selected this one because it has such an unusual patchwork of, um, of color on it. Many of the other butterflies you'll see might have one or two colors, but this one has a whole rainbow of different colors. There's purple, 
there's green, there's blue, really interesting um, shapes and, and colors in there that I thought was really nice to highlight. Um, and what's interesting about this butterfly from a scientific perspective is that it's not actually um, those colorful spots that you can see. They're not actually, the scales themselves are not pigmented. It's the wings beneath it. So the scales are actually clear and the wings beneath uh, the scales have those colors. So that's how it shines through. So that's, um, uh, that, that I thought was an interesting sort of uh, fact about that. And um, as I mentioned, these are only found in Papua New Guinea, and they're actually specifically only found in the remote highlands of Papua New Guinea. They're only found in these sort of high, um, high altitude regions. So very interesting, um, very unique, very beautiful. And then second, uh, I wanted to talk about Papilia blumai. So this butterfly is native to Indonesia. Um, it's actually native to this one specific island in Asia, Indonesia called Sulawesi. Um, and uh, I wanted to highlight as before, it has this classic teardrop shape at the bottom. So it's really a beautiful example of a swallowtail butterfly. Um, and what I find so interesting about this particular butterfly is you can see the, the gradations of green to sort of bluish, turquoise-ish at the bottom. So scientists have actually studied the scales of Papilio blumai because they wanted to understand this optical illusion. These scales are not really different colors. It's the way that the light hits them, makes them shimmer in different colors, right? So it's just kind of almost an olive green at the top, down to a bright green, down to a turquoise-ish blue at the bottom, which, um, so scientists have studied that and tried to integrate it into the manufacturing and the design of currencies. So they want um, different, um, you know, they want currencies to be difficult to forge. And so they've studied the optical properties of the Belio Blumai scales to try and integrate that into currency design. I'm talking a lot really quickly. <laughs> Is there, are there any comments, any questions, anything you want to add, Mike, before I move on to our final butterfly? Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, Marcelo Romano asked if we still have a cave there. Maybe uh, we'll reveal that in the end. Oh, yes, absolutely. That can be the uh, final, uh, <laughs> the, the, the cherry on top of, uh, of the tour. Um, hi, Marcelo, by the way. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so, okay, so talking next about, oh, and then I, I forgot to mention the common names, right? So Graphium Weiski is the scientific name. Purple Swallowtail is the common name. The uh, common name for Papilio blumai is peacock swallowtail. And you can kind of see that it has this beautiful same shades as you might see in a peacock, in a peacock's tail. Um, actually, which I have here. Wow, I have you. I might as well. Um, so you can see um, the peacock's tail has tail feathers, has very similar shades, and you can see especially in this blue that it has that same kind of optical property um, where it's it's kind of shimmering from blue to green um, and so that is why they named it that yep. beautiful um, and so finally today we're going to talk about Papilio rumenzovia um, which is a beautiful black and red butterfly um, this one is also from indonesia um, the common name for it is the scarlet mormon um, Scarlet, obviously, because it's red. Mormon, apparently, I researched this because this species of butterfly is polygamous. And so maybe <laughs> the scientists named him after the Mormons. I don't know if that's like PC right now <laughs> to say that. I don't know if that's totally Whoa. like cool to say, but that is what they were called. That's how they were named and that's why. So I thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Um, the, so this, um, uh, species, as I said, is Papilio rumenzovia. It was named after Nikolai Rumyantsev uh, from the 18th century. He was a um, Russian, uh, um, some kind of government official. I forget exactly what his what his title was, but he was some kind of uh, Russian government official, and he sponsored all of these expeditions for um, naturalists and explorers to go and you know discover new lands, discover new species. So he has a, actually a lot of different um, species and plants and animals 
and things named after him because he was a big sponsor of exploration um, in the 18th century. So I thought that was cool to know too. And um, yeah, so I selected this one just because it has this really beautiful, striking red and black patterning, which is very unusual as well. And I thought that the three of them together really gave you uh, just a sample of within one family, within the Papillionidae family, how much variety there can be, and then also what the similarities uh, and differences are. So um, yeah, so moving on to some display ideas for these. Um, so as I have shown people before, um, our frames are really, in, really interesting because um, you can not only display them on a shelf, but you can also put them on the wall. Each frame has um, a uh, sawtooth hook, um, so it makes it really easy to um, you know, hang it on the wall like a picture. And so a lot of people do that. Some people put them on, you know, on their shelves or on their desks, but then a lot of people also put them up on the wall. And a lot of people, what they do is they'll create like a mosaic they'll get a bunch of different butterflies or insects and they'll do um, different uh, combinations. They can either get the same species, um, you know, and make a really kind of a striking, um, striking pattern. Or maybe we can show you towards the end. We have one really big butterfly display that has this um, very geometric, symmetrical um, display of the same species. And then other people that we've worked with will do a bunch of different species and um, one way that we can work with you on that you can select all of the different species that you want and then we can put them either in different size frames or sometimes it looks really nicely when you put them all in the same size frame because then you can create a really balanced display and just have a bunch of different species inside so i encourage you to reach out to us if that's something that you would like to do you could do two four six ten twenty different species and we could have them all displayed for you on a wall um, that would be really a cool display to do. Um, so as I mentioned, we do the, the custom frame sizes. You can request pretty much any species and any size frame as long as it fits. We will put it in there for you. And then also, we have um, our standard uh, colors are black and natural frames. So the black frames tend to be more popular. I think it's a bit of a more modern look. But we also have the natural frame finish, which is really beautiful too. Um, and it really depends First of all, in your decor, of course, but also on the specimen itself, I think. Some, um, you know, do, do better with different kinds of contrast. So that's something to consider as well. And then because we have all of these custom capabilities, we could also make frames in any color that fit your decor. So if you had like an all red room and you wanted all red frames, uh, we could paint them red for you. We could do gold, gray. We could do a distressed, rustic look. So we have a lot of, of capabilities of doing custom frame sizes and custom frame colors. So I would definitely suggest that you consider that if that's something that you want to um, incorporate into your design. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to say about our framed insects. Um, could I show them the, the big morpho display? Sure. Okay. There's one right behind you. Oh, yeah. So this one, right. so this one is would be more of like a mandala um, design for so it has blue morphos, but then it also has different types of morphos in it. It has uh, some papilio. You can see the 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 graphium white key, which is like the purplish, pinkish, and green towards the middle, which is the one that I showed you earlier. So that one's really cool. So that's an that's another example of a kind of design we could do. So not only we do we do the individual frame, which of course we could create a design for you with individual frames, but we also have larger frames and we can do a custom design within a larger frame. So I just wanted to show you guys um, the uh, morpho display because I think it's pretty cool, pretty striking. So over here, so these are all the same species of morpho butterfly in one large display um, and I think that it's really nice it's geometric symmetrical um, looks very modern so really like that piece and then of course we have our cave bear so here he is in all his glory
over nine feet tall. Yeah, a little bit over, I think. A little over nine feet tall. So, really big, really big uh, specimen. Does come apart for shipping and installation if uh, anyone is interested in. Comes apart into all of its, you know, all of its bones, and then we set it back up for you um, wherever you like. Um, and so, in conclusion, uh, I just wanted to remind everyone: um, thank you for watching our um, our Facebook live streams. We also have replays of every episode on YouTube as well. So I would really encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Um, we're just at the Evolution Store on YouTube. Um, so please like and comment uh, on the videos there as well. Uh, I want to read some of the comments um, from our last episode, um, which was great. We got a lot of feedback on that episode, which was fun. Um, so Lindsay Page said, uh, My boyfriend ordered me a raccoon skull from your shop for my birthday. I'd like to share pics when I have my terrarium for him made. So that's great. Our customers are so, um, so creative. I really love that. If you have any pictures of products or displays that you've done, um, with items from our store, please post them on social media and tag us. We'll be happy to repost them. We're at the Evolution Store on Facebook and Instagram, and we're at the Evolution NYC on Twitter. So please um, tag us if you have anything like that to share. Um, and Kevin Green said, um, Star Wars in the background, Futurama jokes, a reference to Pond Far. You all are knocking it out of the park. Thank you, Kevin, for all of the support. If you don't know what any of those things are referring to, you should check out last week's episode. We had a lot of fun. We talked about ammonites and a lot of other things as well. Um, and yeah, so just a reminder um, that we want to start doing the virtual shopping. So please um, let us know. Call us, 212-343-1114, extension 201, or email us at info at theevolutionstore.com. We would love to set that up and, um, you know, give you a private shopping tour from anywhere in the world. So, um, yeah, thanks again for joining us. Always fun to see you guys. And um, we plan on doing these episodes now. Um, we're going to try and do them on Wednesdays at 3, um, just because that fits better with our schedule now that we are spending more time in the store. Um, yeah, so we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.